Our ninth podcast from chapter 11 is simply an extension of podcast number eight when we went over the law of segregation and the uh, basics of probability in a Punnett square. So let's just review that stuff real quickly. All right. So we've got a dominant allele, a recessive allele. And when you make gametes, you employ the law of segregation. Half the gametes get that. The other half got this. And then a Punnett square, if you had two individuals that were both heterozygous for the same trait, you would do this stuff. All right. Now, when you do a Punnett square, the hardest thing is making sure that you got the right stuff on the outside. Because once you have the correct stuff on the outside, fill in the inside is a piece of cake. All right. Now, the outside represents the gametes. And in order to figure out the gametes, you've got to know the law of segregation. All right. So when we do the one factor cross, you always want to think of the law of segregation. All right. So that's all a review from podcast number eight. All right. The mono hybrid or one factor cross. This prefix mono, that just means one. And hybrid just kind of refers to trait. So basically what a mono hybrid is, you're only looking at one trait. Now that organism may have a thousand other traits. You don't care about any of those other ones. You are only paying attention to just one. That's what the mono part means. All right. Now, when Mendel did his monohybrid crosses, his first set of parents he creatively called the P1 generation or first parental generation. And they were both true breeding or purebred genotypes and phenotypes. So if you can remember what this means, that means that they were homozygous dominant or they were homozygous recessive. Make that M look a little better right there. All right. So they were either big T, big T, or you could say that they were little t, little t. All right. That's what they mean. All right. So their genotypes, which would be these letters, always breed true. And obviously, uh, phenotypically, this one can only give the tall and this one can only give the short allele. So that's what they mean by that. Now, the first set of offspring were always hybrids. And the first set of offspring is referred to as the F1. The F comes from the Latin word for son, which is filial. And obviously the one stands for first. All right. So if we were to do a Punnett square here, it would look something like this. And we're going to use the tall and the short alleles. All right. So the first set of parents were true, were different purebreds. So there's a purebred tall, there's a purebred short, and every single box inside here would be the uh, would be the same. All right. So in this case, whoops, let's try this again. Big T, little t, that represents your F1s, and then these individuals right here, that's your first set of parents. That would be your P1. All right. All right, now if you don't like my drawing that I just did, here's the same thing, but it's just better. All right, so the first set of parents are right up here. So let's use some different colors. We'll start notating this stuff. All right, so this is your P1s right there. And you have two different purebreds. Remember, if you're homozygous, you're a purebred, or you're what we call true breeding. All right. Now, inside the box, every individual inside the Punnett square was heterozygous. These were hybrids. Whoops, let's try this again. Can't spell hybrid. You know, it's such a hard word to spell. They're all hybrids. And also remember that everything inside that Punnett square represents the F1 generation or the first set of offspring. Now, because we have a Punnett square here, we can use probabilities. In this case, the F1 generation, the genotype ratio would be 100% uh, hybrid. I just do it like that, or heterozygous. The phenotype ratio would be 100% tall. All right. Let me figure that out right there. 
Now remember, genotype means the type of genes that you have, so you would use the words like homozygous dominant, recessive, etc. Phenotype is simply what you look like. So if you have these genes, you're going to look tall. All right, next step. He would then take the F1 generation and use them as the next set of parents, or they would be the P2. So you took the F1s, and you let them mate with the other F1s, and there that's your second set of parents. Now, if you don't understand what that stuff means in green, we're going to use a picture that'll show you exactly what it means. Now, when you do this cross, you're going to get a second set of offspring. And this second set of offspring is creatively called the F1s. I'm sorry, the F2s which means the second filial generation or the second group of sons. Now, the phenotype ratio of this would always be 3 to 1. 3 would show the dominant phenotype. 1 would show the recessive phenotype. The cross would also have a genotype ratio of 1 to 2 to 1. One individual would be homozygous dominant, one individual would be heterozygous, and another one would be homozygous recessive. Okay, so we've got a picture that comes up to explain this stuff. Now, you notice that this is red. Very important. You need to memorize which situations give you these two different ratios. We actually have to memorize three ratio combinations, and here are the two of the three. And they'll be easy for you guys to remember, so if you don't get it right this second, you'll get it. All right, so what we have here, let's do some drawings out here again. All right. These individuals on the outside, right there, this is the second set of parents. And remember, the F1s, which were the first set of offspring, they will become the second or the P2 generation. All these guys on the inside of the Punnett squares, I'm just going to draw arrows to all of them. These rec represent the second set of offspring, so we call them the F2 generation. Now, let's look at our genotype ratios. Now, you got to remember, Punnett squares are all about probabilities. Probabilities can be shown either through fractions, percents, or a ratio. And in this case, a ratio works perfectly. All right, now, yeah, so let me, uh, actually, I'm going to turn those. Turn that into an equal sign. All right, so the genotype ratio would be this. How many of these boxes are homozygous dominant? Uh, looks like only that one, so we'll put a 1. All right, how many boxes are heterozygous? Uh, not that one, that one, that one, that one, okay. Or not that one, so that'd be 2. And how many of them are heterozygous? Or, I'm sorry, how many of them are homozygous recessive? Simply that one. So a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio, which means 25% are homozygous dominant, half of them, or 50%, are heterozygous, and 25% are uh, homozygous recessive. Now, let's look at the phenotype ratio. In other words, what are these guys going to look like? Now, it looks like over here that the big B is a black fur in this kind of mouse, and a little B would be the white fur. All right, how many of them are going to be black? Well, anything that has at least one big B is going to be black. One, two, three. Oops, I did it down here. Let's fix that. Make those equal signs. All right, how many of them are going to be white? Uh, not those. Up, oh, that guy right there. The only way you can be white is you have to have two little Bs. And there's your phenotype ratio. 75% or three out of four are going to be black. One of them is going to be white. Okay. All right. Now here we've got pictures using the tall allele. And let's just use a different color. Let's try this purple. All right. P1 generation, remember both parents were purebreds. This is a tall plant. And the only way that you can be I don't like that color. Let's pick a different one. Uh, let's go with the dark green. We'll just ride over the top of that one. All right. So that one would be big T, big T. This one's a purebred short. In fact, the only way that you can be short is you have two little T's. All right. 
when you cross this one with this individual, you all the babies are going to be heterozygous. So there's baby number one, there's baby number two. All right, so those are the first set of offspring. And all the offspring, once again, they're going to be hybrids. All right, now when we mate these guys together, they also will become the second set of parents. So the second set of parents would be this cross. Big T, little t, cross with another heterozygous individual. And this will give you your second set of offspring. Now remember, if you do the Punnett square, and hopefully you can see this over there, uh, big T, little t, actually I'm going to remove that. Put that right down here. Give us more room to see. All right, so you take this parent, we'll put them on top, big T, little t, take this parent, put it on the side, big T, little t, and remember, putting one T here and one big T over there, that's applying the law of segregation. Now it's just plug and chug. Now these ones that are in yellow, those are going to be, whoops, that was a mistake, let's fix that. These ones that are in yellow, gosh, I still screwed it up. All right, let's try this again. You'd think after almost 20 years of teaching, I'd get this one right. There we go. All right. So as you can see, these ones in the yellow, they're the F2 generation. So this individual represents that box right there. Big T, little t. All right, and this individual and this individual here, those are the heterozygous. Big T, little t. I'm going to write that down here. Big T, little t. I'll put this one back down here. Easier for you guys to see. And then there's the second heterozygous individual. And then this short plant has to be that one. And as you look, you've got your 3 to 1 tall to short and your genotype ratio 1 to 2 to 1. One homozygous dominant, two heterozygous, one homozygous recessive. And just remember, that's a phenotype ratio and that one is a genotype ratio. All right. That's how Mendel's basic experiments worked and he got these two ratios over and over and over again. All right. You guys for homework and your other assignments you will have tons of these Punnett square problems. You'll become masters at doing the monohybrid or one factor crosses. All right. One other thing I want to add to this. When you see the word monohybrid you need to think four boxes. In other words, you're going to have one, two, three, four boxes in your Punnett square. Very, very easy. All right. I'm going to kick it up a notch with our next podcast when we have to do uh, Punnett squares that have uh, 16 boxes.